This morning, we're gonna be talking about a very interesting topic that we find in this chapter on concise theology. This morning, we'll be talking about the topic of church discipline. And the reason why I think it's an interesting topic is because for the church in the West, we don't really talk about church discipline. It's not something that we uh, do a whole lot of. So I think it's sort of this idea that we kind of put off to the side when we think about, uh, you know, what it means to be part of a church and what the church is supposed to do. But what I want to do is just kind of give you a brief insight into what the Bible says about church discipline and ultimately what is it supposed to accomplish. You, you understand that, you know, I talked a couple weeks ago about, or not too long ago, about how the church is a gathering of believers together. But within that, uh, there is this call of holiness that we see uh, God, uh, you know, telling his people to uh, not be part of the world, but to head towards being a lot like Christ. And when someone steps outside of the bounds of that, there is a call uh, for the church to be able to address that. So we sort of see that in at least two places in the New Testament. The first is what you know, Jesus uh, gives to us the, the Matthew 18 about how, you know, if we have a disagreement with a brother or sister and we go to them and win them back, that's good. But if we don't win them back in the disagreement, uh, essentially uh, what we try to do is we try to bring people into that scenario and situation and to make that right. And if that person is not uh, receiving that, then there is this moment of which Jesus sorts of says, let them go and treat them as though they would be a pagan person. There's a reason for that. And I'll talk about that in a second. But the other place where we sort of see it is in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, where there was this person within the context of the church, here's a member of the church, and they were having an inappropriate sexual relationship uh, with their stepmother. And so obviously for a Christian person, that is not what they're supposed to do in terms of how they, uh, you know, use their body, because that's where Paul goes on to talk about that they are, that we are, our bodies are supposed to be temples of the Holy Spirit. And so Paul instructs the church because of that, uh, that person's sort of unrepentant action that they would be cast out of the church. It's a, it's a, uh, a word that you might've heard before. It's called excommunicate. Now, you have to understand that when you read it, read everything within its larger context, you come to discover that the purpose of someone being removed from a congregation is not that they would be kicked out of a club or a cult uh, or anything of that nature. It's so that they could experience the, you know, kind of the brokenness of the world in hopes that they would be restored back to the fellowship. If you were to read 2 Corinthians, you see Paul sort of sounds like he's addressing that that person that was anguished and brokenhearted over what they did, they were restored back into their community and Paul rejoiced over that. You have to understand that church discipline is designed not for a punishment so that people would be kicked out, but rather so they could be corrected and brought back in in a much healthier state than where they were. It's for the health and for the life of the church to do that. Now, like I said, we don't usually do that in our day and age, but that is what church discipline was like back then. And if we ever find ourselves in that sort of situation, I imagine that we would have that same approach, that our, that our hope would not be that that person would be kicked out and removed altogether. It would be hoped that they would uh, you know, be brought back, corrected, and brought back to the health uh, of the church community so they could thrive and be restored once again. So if you'd never thought about this before, I hope that was a helpful explanation for you. Uh, if you need any more questions, feel free to contact me and we could chat some more about it. So I hope this was helpful for you this morning and have a blessed day.